introduction. Hey, Paul here. And here's another installment of the Phoenix College NASA Ascend training material. This video is going to focus on programming in C++ and the Arduino language. In this video, we're going to cover how procedural languages work and uh, generally specifics to the C++ language and how it applies to the Arduino microcontroller. I want to clarify because I don't want you to get mixed up in some of the small ways that I use C++ and Arduino. The two are one and the same, except that Arduino has some bells and whistles that C++ doesn't have. Basically, the Arduino platform is a microcontroller that was made to be very easily uh, designed pretty much for artists. So there's a lot of complicated things that happen for programming normal microcontrollers. So all of that is just taken care of in the Arduino IDE, in the Arduino development program. So because of this, when you program in Arduino, you're actually programming in C++, but you're able to use some additional functions that can help things like accessing hardware pins. Now, when programming in any language, basically the way that it works, at least in the context of C++, is you edit a text file, and then you do something called compile it, and then that creates an executable program on a desktop computer. The process works pretty similarly on a microcontroller, except it has to go through this USB translation so that it can actually dump onto the microcontroller itself. Here's just a visual breakdown of how that process actually works on both in Arduino specifically and on a desktop computer. I want to show both the Arduino and the desktop C++ version because this will allow you to experiment using C++ and actually check your programming algorithm without necessarily needing an Arduino nearby. Here's a compilation flow of an Arduino program and a C++ program. On the left you'll see the compilation flow for an Arduino microcontroller. You'll see you'll start off with a text file that has an extension INO, so it's file.ino. That ends up running over through the compiler, which is encased inside the Arduino IDE program. After the compiler, that program gets sent through the tool chain, which is basically a special set of tools for the specific chip that's on the Arduino. Uh, if it's the Arduino Uno, then it's the, it's the AdMega328 chip. After it goes through the tool chain, it travels down the USB cord to the Arduino and actually gets programmed. Here's the flow for a desktop C++ program. You start off with a text file the same way, except this time the extension is actually going to be a CPP extension. So it's file.cpp with all of the program out on, on the inside. This time, the compiler is actually not built into any special program because you're just doing it on the desktop. A couple of programs that you might choose to compile your C++ program are G++ or CodeBlocks. I'll leave a link in the description. After compilation, CodeBlocks or G++ will actually output an executable file directly. That will be a file that you can actually run using your operating system. This method of editing a text file and then compiling that into an executable file is basically the way that we write programs. In the end, we need all this information to be zeros and ones for the computer because the computer operates on zeros and ones. So we create high-level languages like C++ that create a human-readable set of functions that we can give the computer and then that gets translated to zeros and ones. So in order to instruct the computer to do anything, we have to write a text file full of all kinds of instructions. Those uh, sets of instructions go through a compiler that gets tra translates all of those instructions into zeros and ones that the computer can actually run. And then that gets set up to be run by the operating system. Basically what's going on is here, we have a human readable set of functions that we can understand and that we can say, all right, this is the function for turning some light switch on or turning on some light switch off. Right here is where that human readable language gets translated into zeros and ones, which is actually the language that the computer needs. This is how we can translate human readable programming languages into uh, machine executable languages through this kind of workflow. And of course, I'll be showing you. This is a transition to my desktop. So here we have two very basic programs in the Arduino language as well as standard C++. So we have the C++ version uh, of like just a very, very basic program over here. 
and an Arduino Blink program over here, which you should be able to find this in the Arduino IDE. It's not gonna have the exact same structure as this, but it's basically gonna be doing the same thing. And then this is just some, uh, just a very, very simple Hello World program. And uh, what a Hello World program or an Arduino Blink program is doing, what its purpose is, is uh, basically just to test out your code, test your compiler, and uh, everything is, is all working. Just to make sure that you have enough of your software all set up on your computer so that you can compile code and then actually run it on your computer and it like actually be successful. If it's not able to run just a basic Hello World program, you're never ever going to be able to do anything more complex uh, because you need these basic things to be operational. Absolutely. So my main goal here is basically to give you sort of a crash course experience, just showing you a little bit about uh, how code is going to look while you're, you know, going through engineering and, and programming. And hopefully just looking at really, really crazy looking text all the time that doesn't say anything in direct English won't be as intimidating after this. So let's start with the C++ version of a Hello World program and see what makes all of this up. So the biggest difference between the colors is these parts are faded and these parts are very, very bright. These faded parts are comments. Comments are things that don't actually get run by the computer. They don't do anything. They're basically just there so that you can tell yourself what's happening. The thing is, is that all of this programming, all of the functional stuff, is not direct English. So it's not going to be that easy for you to just intuitively understand right at first. So using something like comments very, very often is an awesome thing to do for yourself. First off, we have this include statement. This include statement is including IOStream. IOStream is a C++ library that allows you to basically interact with uh, text on a screen. So for example, I have this terminal going on right now. Uh, and if I want to list a directory, it gives me all kinds of output uh, on a text screen, okay? And when I'm typing into it, clear, I'm giving it some kind of text input, but I'm doing it through the terminal. That's what IOStream is giving me access to. Using namespace STD, that's basically more or less declaring uh, where your workspace is. I honestly haven't had to change this at all in my programming experience in C++, so at this point, you can probably just memorize this line. Next, we have main. I have a couple of indentations here because all of this is contained within main. All of this stuff is part of main, and you know that because of these braces. Main is the main function that actually gets run by every single C++ program. Every program needs a main, and all of the bulk of your program, all of the algorithms, all of the decisions, all of the magic, all goes inside main. So in our main, we see out hello world. So what see out is doing is it's sending whatever is on the right side of this guy to the text output, to the IO stream. And then it ends main. And that's pretty much all that it does. This program basically just includes access to the screen to uh, send out text to the terminal, and then prints out hello world, and then just ends. So now just looking at that, and then obviously from my previous explanation about comments, all of this is a comment. And you know that it's a comment because uh, a block comment starts with these two characters and then ends with these two characters. So I'll just show you the trigger. So notice that's all white. Now it's all black. But I want something like this to be code so I can close it like that. There are also single line comments in which you have these two symbols right next to each other, just two slashes, and pretty much everything right after these two slashes are comments. Bam. So now that we've seen the anatomy of a C++ program, just a standard desktop C++ program, let's run it. 
so here I'm going to use the G++ compiler that's available on a lot of uh, pretty much all Linux systems because it's all open source. I'm compiling training.cpp which is my C++ program and I'm going to output a file called program and then I'm going to run that program. So I'm going to do all this in one line. And it says hello world. Okay, so that program worked. Now let's take a look over at a Blink program from the Arduino language. This is very similar. It sort of has a main for an Arduino, but instead it has two different things. It has a setup and a loop. Now, what's kind of interesting is that this is secretly inside a main, like inside all the brains of all the Arduino IDEs and everything like that. There's actually a main in there, and there's these, the setup and this loop are just inside another main. But you don't have to worry about that most of, uh, pretty much all the time when you're programming an Arduino, because it's all just handled for you. Anyway, in Arduino, you have two parallels to main. Instead, you have a setup and a loop, and they both do exactly what their names imply. Setup runs once, right at the beginning, uh, right when you power up or right after you reset the system. And then right after that, loop runs, and it just continuously does that for the rest of its life, or until it resets, or until a power failure happens, or until a sledgehammer crushes it. Now notice that this, uh, the Arduino language is behaving in the same way as C++ in that the comments are the same, these are single line comments that are triggered by uh, two double slashes, um, you kind of have stuff being contained within these, these uh, squiggly brackets, just the same way as main. Um, the only thing that uh, uh, else that's pretty different is that uh, there's, there's no return on these, you don't have to have that, but you have to have that in uh, C++. Um, now let's look at what this is actually doing. In the setup, when it runs just once, it does pin mode 13 output. So what this is doing is it's configuring pin 13 on the Arduino, which happens to be connected to the uh, LED that's on the board, and configuring it as an output pin. Since this is an I.O. pin, which stands for input output, you can configure it and reconfigure it on the fly as uh, inputs or outputs, so you can read a digital state or you can output some digital state. Uh, of course, this depends on um, the the voltage level depends on uh, what kind of system you're actually using. Then, after pin mode, we have the start of the main loop. In the main loop, we have digital write 13 high. Now, here we can almost just kind of intuitively see that this is going to write a digital value to pin 13 and it's going to write high to that pin. Okay, so now high is analogous to turning on the switch. It's applying 5 volts. If you're using something like an Arduino Uno, that's a 5 volt system, so it's doing logic with 5 volts. So when it turns on this pin, it just, when you measure that pin with uh, something like a multimeter or something like that, it's going to go to 5 volts or around that. Uh, and then it's going to wait, it's going to delay 1,000 milliseconds. Uh, it's milliseconds because computers are crazy fast. Um, so you wait 1,000 milliseconds, and then you digital write 13 low. So instead of uh, switching it high to 5 volts, you switch it low to 0 volts. And then you delay another uh, 1,000 milliseconds or 1 second. And then right as soon as it hits this second bracket, because this is a loop, uh, this jumps way back up here and then does it again. So it turns on, wait, off, wait, on, wait, off, wait. That's a blink. And that's all that this does. And you can pretty much just, uh, uh, you know, take a USB cord and... Uh, uh, go over to an Arduino uh, IDE, in fact I can just like load one up right now, uh, and compile this and check this uh, because you can also compile stuff uh, without running it. I like, um, at least with C++ programs, I like compiling and running at the same time uh, just to check to see because if there's something wrong with my code, there's going to be a compilation error. 
Uh, so just to show you where I got uh, this kind of blank program, uh, you have the Arduino IDE here. Uh, you can press open, basics, blink, and then you basically get a blink that uh, I just took a bunch of stuff out and, and made some other comments. But it's doing the same thing, setup, pin mode, 13, uh, digital write 13 high, weight 13 low weight and uh, yeah so we try to compile that and then it goes compiling sketch I'm thinking I'm done compiling and it's happy it doesn't uh, it doesn't think there's any kind of syntax error or anything like that a syntax error is when uh, your code is uh, functionally wrong so for example uh, in C++ and in Arduino both of these languages use semicolons to um, basically tell the compiler to tell the computer uh, that this statement is done okay uh, now that means that semicolons are extremely important so uh, if I get rid of this one it's going to throw up all over itself yeah so let's just see that kind of error so expected a semicolon before the ending bracket uh, it's like this shouldn't be here because there should be a semicolon. This is a statement. Where's the ending of the statement? Come on, man. Get your stuff together. Compile. And this works the same way for uh, desktop uh, C++. Um, so we have this. Uh, we have our semicolon right here. That's the ending of the statement. Let's get rid of that and make it throw up all over itself expected semicolon before the return so here it didn't go oh there's supposed to be semicolon before this bracket it said there's supposed to be semicolon before this entire next word so it it knows that there's supposed to be something there uh, so do get used to if you're going to be programming at all on this project do get used to uh, making lots and lots of mistakes in your code and uh, having to read through something like this to find that problem uh, to avoid doing this is to avoid pretty much all of programming um, uh, this is this like reading the compiler errors and finding your errors uh, is a major part of programming development and uh, it's definitely something that you should get used to, um, you know, uh, just reading through. Most of the time, uh, these kinds of errors, you can just Google them a lot of the time. Um, what ends up happening is that you start noticing patterns, uh, especially your own patterns for making mistakes and what kind of errors commonly come up for you. Um, I don't see th that many uh, semicolon errors anymore because uh, I use Atom and that completes a lot of stuff for me. So yeah. All right, so that was pretty much it. Uh, so what we covered today was basically just the bare minimum uh, compilation of code and then running that code. Um, so this is just a basic workflow of how programming works. Uh, you write human readable text and then that gets translated into machine code, which is just zeros and ones. So the void setup or void loop would be, get translated into zeros and ones, and then we run that. Uh, so that's a basic workflow for programming. And from here, now that we have that information, uh, we're going to move on to learning more intricate details about the language and language structure so that we can do more interesting things than just blinking lights or just saying hello world. So I also want to emphasize right now, in case I didn't emphasize it enough during the main of the video, that uh, if you want to learn how to become a good programmer, you're going to have to practice. It's going to have to be a lot of practice. Um, what you're trying to learn how to do is you're not just learning the features of the language, but you're learning how to think in programming, because you're learning how to instruct the computer how to make decisions. And that is definitely not the normal way that a lot of people think a lot of the time. So you're training a lot of these things, and you're only going to get that down if you do it over and over and over. And you'll get better. Okay, so go out and uh, try to make some Hello World programs. Try out the CodeBlocks compiler, or uh, try to find a compile, uh, another compiler online, and try to actually run a Hello World program. Download the Arduino IDE and try to run the Blink program on, on an actual Arduino board if you have one. Um, only through doing these will you truly get what I did in this video, and what's required to make it work. Okay, that's all I had for today. I'll see you in the next installment, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye.